Hello, I'm Matt, and welcome to this series of videos where I'll be teaching you how to automate programming related tasks with GitHub Actions. The programming languages covered here will be C, Rust, and Golang, but you can apply this knowledge to any project and therefore any programming language out there. And you don't have to spend a single dollar on anything because GitHub Actions has a free tier where you can use their runners or shall we say remote computers to pick up jobs and run your tasks remotely. Now let's begin with a few questions. So what is a CI pipeline? A CI pipeline is a way to automate processes when there are changes in your code. For example, checking formatting, uh, building your code and releasing some artifact files. Anything you can do on a terminal you can do in a CI as well. Now, why would you benefit from having a CI pipeline? I think the answer is very clear on this one. So you can spot mistakes very quickly. So for example, if you commit something that broke the build, you will get a notification that will tell you so. And you can also ensure that your code quality is very high. So you can do all sorts of tasks such as, you know, checking the formatting of the code, making sure you run your tests to make sure that your code at least one works or is up to standards, right? But most importantly, serious software companies use CI automation in their development process. So it's very important to know how to create and maintain CI pipelines if you want to remain competitive in the job market out there. So let's begin by taking a look what we actually achieve in this video. And before we continue, I'd like to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel and like the video because it does help me out quite a lot. That is it. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So we are going to create a build pipeline for this C++ forward slash CMake project that we have, but it should also apply to Rust and Golang. And I'm going to take you step by step on how you can create your GitHub workflow YAML file so you can have something like this. So your code gets checked out, your code gets built and tested all in one kind of stage here. All of the code mentioned in this video will be in the link in the description and you should be able to just copy and paste everything. But I would highly recommend to pay attention and make sure that you understand these concepts because they will be useful and you will need all of the knowledge from this video to actually watch the remaining stuff, which is, you know, more advanced pipeline work. So if you check out the link, there will be a project where we have three main directories here. We have CPP, Golang and Rust. So these are C++, Golang and Rust projects. And they are pretty much just hello world projects. You can go into them. For example, in the C++ project here, there's an executable and there's a library created. The program that we compile here basically just says hello world. I'm not going to bother explaining how to do that. If you are interested in learning how to create your own C++ CMake project in a way that you can debug it with VS Code, I recommend checking out this video because it explains things a lot better. So aside from having a different directory for each language here, we've also got this very interesting .github directory, right? So what's inside there? You can see that there is three YAML files. Hmm. So that's CMake build, Golang build and Rust build. So these three files are essentially the workflow file for each of these directories here. So the CPP directory is going to get built by the CMake build. It, I should have called the CPP, but let's not talk about that. Uh, the Rust is going to get built by the Rust build and so on and so forth, right? We're not going to bother too much. So let's open up the CMake build so we can actually figure out what this does and what you should do to get your very first build pipeline for a project. So starting from the top, the first thing you should be defining is the name. We always have a name for the action. So in my case here is just simply called C++ CMake build. But this name here is going to be showing up as the name that comes up on your GitHub actions tab. To get to the GitHub actions tab, we haven't explained it yet, but you just go on your project and you click on actions and you should find your GitHub name in here, which is equivalent to whatever is up here. Now, the second thing you should be doing is defining the triggers. So in CI CD pipelines, triggers simply means what events trigger your pipeline to actually start running. So, so when do the jobs actually get picked up by a machine and run on a particular commit? I would highly recommend having something like this as your first trigger, because this should make sure that you're only running the pipeline on important events such as pull requests and whenever you are merging something onto main. So for example, push branches main here will run this workflow automatically whenever there's a new push to main or whenever you merge something into main. And we also have pull requests here targeting the branch main. So whenever you create a pull request that is targeting main, the pipeline will also run. So whenever there's any changes on that pull request, this will also run. Okay. This should be enough for the start. We will talk more about it in later videos because this is actually a very, very important concept and there are a lot more options than just these two here for the triggers in GitHub. 
uh, but we'll talk more about that in the future. We also have a section for the environment variables here. This is where you can define kind of like global environment variable values. Uh, so these, this build type release will be available to every single job that we're running down below here. So yeah, if you want to define any global environment variables, do it here in the env section. Now, moving on to the interesting part of this workflow, the jobs, right? So jobs here is where you define what we call stages in other places. So GitHub action doesn't quite have stages, but this is equivalent to what stage is. And a stage is basically a collection of different jobs that do a certain thing. So for example, we have a build stage and in the build stage, we run a bunch of scripts. So little scripts or little steps as GitHub calls it that will check out my repository, run the CMake configure step, install all the dependencies that I need to build my project and also build the project. So the jobs YAML section here defines a bunch of stages or collection of other steps. And each stage should achieve something meaningful in your project, right? So in our case, we're only doing the build here and we'll get into it. So this is the syntax. You start with jobs here and then you put the YAML name for it. So in my case, it's just build. And then you actually specify the name for the stage in the name property here. And this name will actually show up on the GitHub Actions UI. So we have CMake build here, which is this name here. So once you have the name, you should probably specify where it runs on. So for now, you can just leave it as Ubuntu latest. We will explain this towards the end of the video. I'm not going to bother too much here, but this is the machine that will pick it on. And if you want to have the free tier stuff, you should probably use one of the Ubuntu runners because I think they consume the least minutes on GitHub for free tier accounts. So try and having that in there, which essentially means that all of your jobs will be running in a Ubuntu environment. So in a Ubuntu terminal, right? But that's not really a problem for us here. We just want to build the project. And then we have this other very interesting section, which is also very important steps. So in steps is where you actually define the collection of like little jobs that you want to run, or in other words, the uh, terminal commands that you want to run on your pipeline, as well as some templates. We'll talk about them in the future. But you know, this is where you define the bread and butter of the pipeline. This is what does the actual work. So you can see here, the first thing this is doing is, is checking out my GitHub repository using this template actions checkout. This is a kind of a built-in operation that GitHub provides to you. You can do this to check out your current repository in the commit that triggered this pipeline. And then you can see that I define my own custom scripts here that are running as well. So there is this block of code here, which I called install dependencies. And what this does is it will run. And this line here will basically run the following in sequence as a script in the terminal. It will basically install a bunch of OpenGL related drivers uh, through apt. And this project will build a graphical application. So we need all of this, but it's here more of an example, to be honest other than it's something that I need to do now. It's just so you can see how you do something like that. So I install some system dependencies. Once we've installed the system dependencies here, we actually call CMake to configure that project. And then the next block is the CMake build. So this is the most important step, perhaps, is where we actually build the project and kind of hope that nothing broke and things still build, right? And at the very end, once we build the project, if nothing failed, it will test my project with ctest, right? And you can kind of see all of this in here. So if I click on it, which has succeeded now, thank God, we have, you know, installing dependencies here. You can see we've installed all of the app stuff and configure CMake. And you kind of get the gist that, you know, these names here will basically be equivalent to whatever is shown on the tab. And the, you'll be able to see the logs of the work that you do or the logs of the commands that you run if you just open the tabs here, right? So the most important one was build and things just build without any errors, which is good. And we did have a test running as well, right? So that is it. This is your first CMake build pipeline. I hope you've learned something here, but let's not stop there. For most of you that will be running on your free tier accounts, so you can run, you can create a GitHub Actions workflow in any free project on GitHub you will probably want to use the GitHub runners, right, for free. But let's take a look at how you figure out what goes in runs on. So runs on, as I said, tells GitHub which machines will pick it, right? So in my case, it will just pick Ubuntu latest, which, and I believe Ubuntu latest defaults to Ubuntu 24.04, I think it is, but we can check it here. So this is the list of values that you can have in there. You can see Ubuntu latest. Let's just click on that and see what it defaults to. And it is 24.04 here. All of these values you can pretty much just put in here, right? You can actually have other values 
such as if you want to do a Windows build, if you want to, you know, compile your project for Windows and release a artifact or a build artifact uh, for Windows, you will probably use the Windows latest. There's also some macOS runners, but I'm not actually sure if you can use them for free. Now, once you've figured out which machine you want to run on, you kind of want to know like what software is actually included in that machine, what software is included in the runner, so that if you don't have anything, you can kind of install it with apt, for example, which in the case of Ubuntu, right? So in my case, you can see that I actually didn't install CMake here because I knew CMake was already available in my runner. And how did I know that? Well, if you click on it, if you click on Ubuntu latest, you can see the list of installed software. And if I search for CMake here, I know that I have CMake 3.0 one already included. I'll leave the link to this table in the description of the video so you can go and do the research yourself as well. But I highly recommend trying out a few different builds. Perhaps you try out a Windows workflow as well as it as a Linux workflow. And this other table here on GitHub Actions documentation tells you exactly how many minutes you can actually run per month. So a free account has a limit of 2000 actions minutes for free. So what is that actually equivalent to? Let's get a calculator up here. If your build takes 10 minutes, right? So if your only job in your pipeline is a build pipeline and it takes 10 minutes, right? I'm not counting the other Rust and Golang that we have. How many of them can we actually get? So we can have 2,000 2, minutes divided by 10. And you can have 200 runs of that pipeline per month, right? So if we were to divide that by 30, which is around a month, how many can you actually have a day? So you can have about six of those builds a day done automatically for you, right? So you can see how important it is to actually minimize the running minutes so you don't go over this. It does sound like a low number, doesn't it? Just six of them a day, it's probably not enough. But I'll tell you what, like not every project is going to take 10 minutes. That's actually a very big like build project that you have. So in our case here, that particular build took one minute, right? So we can have, so we can have 66 of these a day running, which is, you know, now better, isn't it? So there is obviously a balance here. You want to keep the time of your build very low and you also want to keep uh, the times that you run the workflows very low so you don't consume those three minutes. But this is for sure more than enough for most people, especially if you're starting out. The free tier account is just fine. Now I'm going to end this video here. Don't forget to check out the code in the description and I'll give you a little exercise. So can you right now modify any of these builds so for example, if you have a Rust project, you probably be copying code from the Rust build here. But can you also add a step here that will perhaps say, you know, hello from the pipeline between the cargo build and cargo tests. And if you can't do that, you've not learned anything in this video, I think you should rewatch it, but you should be able to do that with no problem. That is it for me today. 